In this episode of the G-Shock Watcher, I have a new watch that we're modifying, the GWX 5600. I've got a modification kit and I have a cocktail. So let's have some fun. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the G-Shock Watcher. It's been a while since we've done any sort of modifications and there was a watch that I kept seeing come up every now and again and I thought it was really intriguing. It was a digital square, but this particular watch is just a little bit different because it has a tide and a moon graph on the top of the watch. Now, this is the GWX 5600. We'll get a closer look at that in a sec, but this is a really cool watch. It's got a positive display. Um, in terms of features, multi-band six, tough solar. But as I said, it's got that unique capability of being able to measure the tides and the moon. And this was really targeted at those people who I guess were in the surf culture, who were out there surfboarding and wanted to know when was high tide or low tide. But I'm sure there is a multitude of other professions who would also want to be able to know what that uh, that tide actually is. So uh, this particular watch I picked up on Bai. So if we jump across here, uh, we can have a look. This is the one I actually got, uh, the GWX 5600. I got this for 17,600 yen. Now I've got an actual price on that. That is around about $164. Now that price that this typically goes at when it was released, it was released back in uh, 2010, right, was 24,200 yen. So that would have been about $205. So saved about $40. But it is a unique watch to be able to find and actually do some modifications to. And I've had my, my eye on a very specific uh, modification kit, which I'll show you uh, in a moment. But we're going to modify this particular watch from its standard sort of resin uh, band to something which is a titanium from AliExpress. So maybe it's titanium, maybe it's not, but we'll give that one a go. In addition for this particular mod, and you'll see in a sec, I'm also going to look at replacing the buttons on the actual watch, which... I think we'll give it a more pronounced feel with that new kit. So let's go take a look at the watch and the modification kit and see how we can get going on trying to turn this from a resin-based surf watch to something a little bit more mech, I guess. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what we are working with today is this watch, the GWX 5600. As I said, first released in June 2010, Multi-band 6, tough solar, world time for 48 cities, stopwatch, all the bells and whistles, five alarms, dual timers, but it also has, what you'll see at the top there, this tidal graph and moon display. And what this is really about is being able to tell you, based on the location you select in the world city, what the tides will actually be. Now, this is always a little bit uh, challenging because the actual tides are not necessarily the local tide where you are. So I live in Singapore. This timer or the world time is set to Singapore. But the closest beach tide that it actually has is in a place called Benoa. Now, I had to go ahead and actually look at where Benoa actually was. So if we go over here to Google Earth, Here's Singapore, and Benoa, if we go over here, is all the way over here in Indonesia. Now, of course, based on the city that you select for your world time, you'll have options for different types of, uh, of tidal zones and, and different areas within your sort of region. So if I was to select a location, say, in the US, say around Los Angeles, the title graphs I would actually have are a little bit different. In fact, uh, in the actual settings of the actual uh, watch itself, you can actually see here the title site name. So 
you know, City Code Lisbon, you can see all the different beaches around there. I'm going to be here in Singapore. So that gives me Benoa, Bali, uh, Ampenan, Lombok in Indonesia, Carap in Australia, Fremantle, Philippines, and things like that. So you can't necessarily go and say, well, I'm in Australia and I want to check the, the tidal times in Los Angeles. You will be able to choose tidal times within your time zone. But it's kind of cool. The ability to be able to sort of see what's actually happening here and have that uh, going. I've kind of lost my screen here. Hang on a sec. There we go. So this is telling me if I go through here and press this button here, let's go back here to the bottom one. If I get this right, uh, we're going to switch through so you can see all the timers here. Uh, you can see there Benoa. So it's recognizing that Benoa is my local time, a uh, local title area I'm choosing. So Benoa, Bali. Uh, and then if I come back, there's tide. So at 6 a.m., it's telling me the tide will be kind of low and starting to increase over time. And what I can do is change the time and it will give me an estimate of what the time will actually be. And this, these tidal zones have been loaded in since... 2009, I think it is. So the actual dates themselves, if I go back over to the um, the documentation here, based on here, based on data as of December 2009. So all of these title sites and everything are preloaded into the actual watch itself. So it's kind of clever that it's able to keep all that information in there. So you can switch between tide. And you can switch between, uh, let's go back. You can switch between tide and you can switch between moon as well. Um, although I can't work out how to get that to happen. But that's what it is. So this is. This is a surface watch. You want to work out when the best time to go ahead and actually surf is. You want to know when the tide's coming in, all those different things. That's what this is going to go ahead and actually do. So now... I want to take this particular watch, Digital Square, because we like the positive displays. I wanted to modify this with another type of watch. So if we come over, this is the modification kit I got. Now, in terms of what I actually purchased, I'm going to go over here to AliExpress. I ordered something from the G Refit Factory store. It's a G Fit New Mech Robot Style DW5600, GW5600. So essentially, it's meant to be able to fit this. What's interesting, if I click this, it doesn't exist anymore. So I'm not necessarily sure if it has actually been removed uh, from the site itself. But uh, I do actually have a, uh, a kit here which we can go ahead and use to modify this particular watch in a titanium view. So if we open this up, we have all of our standard things here. We've got our tools, screws, kind of nice to have this. It's pretty much standard for every single modification kit you get. So you obviously get them from the same place, but it works, right? It's not complicated. In fact, I've got so many of these now that I collect them in a toolbox. What's a little bit different is I've got a replacement face here. Let's see if we can try and open this up. I've got a replacement face. And so you can actually see there, multiband 6 Bluetooth. Doesn't actually have Bluetooth on my particular watch, but obviously other models that have this might have Bluetooth. But, you know, honestly, if I was going to go ahead and actually replace this, I think what we'd find is we'd actually block out some of the features. It might fit but it might not, but I'm going to keep what's actually here because we don't have Bluetooth. And then what we also had, which I added to my order was additional buttons. So you can see there's four buttons in there, which is meant to be part of the modification kit. So that will be interesting. We have a card. It says, thank you so much. We hope you're satisfied. If there's any problems, please feel free to contact us, uh, how to contact them. No idea. Such is the uh, exploration of uh, AliExpress and G-Shock modifications. So here's our actual kit covered up nicely. I mean, it's actually packaged pretty well. 
but you'll get a, a, a kind of sense of what are we looking at here. We've got a mech kind of view, so it's a titanium red. We've got the protection and G-Shock. We've got the different options here. So this one is uh, mode. Uh, is that split reset? Even I have to look at this a bit challenging with eyes. Light, start, stop. Light, start, stop, mode. And it's adjust. So it doesn't necessarily match up, but that should sit on top. And what attracted me to this initially, I kind of thought it was strange, but then it grew on me after a while is this is the actual band. Now, again, it's got the Bluetooth logo. Our watch doesn't have Bluetooth, but it kind of has this interesting sort of text all over the actual band itself, which is meant to be the sort of mech type feeling. Uh, you can sort of see here S1474DV, which I don't have any idea what it is. And it says there, diamond carbon coating stainless steel doesn't feel as heavy as a steel one. It's sort of a combination maybe between the stainless steel and the titanium. So it's a lightweight material, but you know, it looks pretty cool. It's a fairly solid sort of band. It looks high quality. We're going to give this one a go. So what we're going to do here is take this watch. We'll start to disassemble it. So I'm thinking because we need to do the buttons as well, we're going to need to not just take off the band and the face, but we're going to have to remove the actual casing as well in this one. So let's have a look and see what we can actually do with this. So I give to you the GWX 5600 with a Mecha modification kit. Okay, so the boring stuff is out the way. I didn't want to subject that to you, but I've taken off the uh, band and I've taken off the cover. So the face cover is off, the bands are off. Uh, we have these little tiny, I can't even pick it up, probably not a good day to cut my nails. We have these tiny little uh, pins that go inside the band here. Uh, once we basically got the face off, we were able to take the bands back and then utilize this particular tool and a bit tough to see but you can see it's got the little notch on it and so the intention here is to get that into the actual pin here and if I bring that up the idea is to get this when it's in the band get that as close as possible to the edge and then enable you to basically push that down enough to be able to spring the band out. So we have that off now. Now the idea is we need to work out how do we start to pull it all together. Now we have, of course, our band. It's funny, it says here on the actual band itself, it says titanium, base titanium. But then here, it says stainless steel. So someone's right and someone's wrong. What we probably need to try and do is to get the band attached first and then this goes over the top. But like I said, the unique challenging thing we're doing here is we're adding in these particular buttons. So let's open this up and have a look at what we're dealing with. So put it here so we don't lose anything very easy to see in a white background uh, but what we have is these tiny little buttons so I guess the idea is that they will sit there and they will spring into that area there there we go so they spring like that so this is interesting this is probably where I'm gonna get the most nervous this time around doing the actual buttons. I've done complicated mods before, but I haven't replaced buttons. So I think what we'll do here is take off these four screws now and see if we can make that work. Okay, and because we don't, at that point where we are monetized, 
We don't have big sponsors and things like that. So today's episode is sponsored by The Cocktail, a passion fruit martini, which is spectacular, which makes modding very interesting. So let's start with the buttons because these will be all external. The buttons will be internal. So we need to get these out. So four removed and feel it popping up now of course that there is important for the vibration and things like that this is our rubber need to sort of take this out we need to work out how to get into these particular buttons. Now I'm kind of nervous at this point because the buttons are actually inside the frame. All right, so here's the actual frame. We can see the battery. We can see all these different things. Everything needs to be put back exactly how it was. All right, this needs to be back exactly how it was in that particular location as well. So it has to sit. Uh, darn it. That needs to sit properly in the right sort of place and everything needs to go back how it was. But those buttons there are a little bit different. So we'll take a break here. I'm going to go back and have a look on YouTube and see if anybody's done this before because I really don't want to screw this up at this point. Okay, so I went ahead and had a look at some YouTube videos. This, the module itself has to come out. I am nervous because... This is very tricky with some very finicky things. So Okay, module is out. Now here's where it seems is a trick. going to be hard to see I'm going to get really close but at these different buttons there are these little holders that sit within them and I don't have the tool that everybody else is showcasing I'm going to have to use this and see if this actually works for me. So what I saw was that people basically pushed in the button and then slowly removed the actual protection or the holder within each one. Almost need to be able to find something that can pull this out, maybe like tweezers or something. Let's see if we can find something that will help us do that. Okay, so I watched a few videos. I got one button out so far. This is tricky. The intention is what you need to do is push the button in and orient the catch in a way that you can then go through and push it out. And you need to push from the opposite side. So it's not about pulling it out. You got to push it to be able to come from the catch. Okay, number two is out. But I don't know exactly where it went. I'm worried that I'm damaging these things as I go through. So let's see what happens next. Okay, number three is out. That was actually a lot faster this time around. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, all four buttons are now removed. Now, 
my biggest concern is those catches look like they've been pretty much damaged on the way through. There was no easy way to be able to get them out, but those are the four buttons that have been removed. So we need to then work out how do we get these back in. So they will obviously get pushed into this watch. But then really how how well does it get integrated in there? We have to try and work out how do you fix that in. So let's try and actually do that and see if we can make it happen. So I think the problem is it's just not pushing in far enough to activate the buttons. You can sort of see the buttons aren't necessarily pushing in the area. So we have to see, is it the button length or is it the ins installation, I guess. Okay, I should say, I've got one in. And I don't know how good it is, but it seems to be in the right place. It seems to be sitting there at the button and it's holding the button in. So let's assume that we've done the right thing with that particular button. It feels a bit stiff, so we'll see what happens then. Okay, two are in. Like I said, it's still a little dodgy. But they're pressing. And see how it goes when we try to put the case back on top. Okay, so what's really crazy is I realized that from my XKX mod kit, I actually have the tools, which what I need. try and work on those buttons a bit more okay so here's where we're at we can't get this right and the reason for that is the buttons that were actually shipped for this mod these ones here the problem is the size of them these heads here are too big for the holes here and they're not getting enough push into that watch. So I've had to abandon it. And through that, that process itself, uh, it's kind of busted up all of these little uh, rings here. Let me see if I can try and get one of these guys up. They're so, so tiny and fragile. Okay. So this doesn't really work, is it? Yeah, you can just see it there. This is the thing which holds the button in place. So when you put the button in, you need to clip this on the stem. And then what it does is it holds the button in place when you push it. So they're very delicate. And what's happened is, as we've tried to adjust them or take them out, some of them broken, some have lost. Um, so they're a bit of a pain. Um, so what, what I've done is I've gone onto AliExpress and ordered a kit of 20 of them that we can reuse from the start. Uh, so what we'll probably have to do is to try it with the silver buttons. Um, I could potentially go and, and try and order another set of these ones here, these black ones, but I'm just not guaranteed on the actual size. So I know that these silver ones, which the watch had originally, these ones here, these ones do fit. So it's not a deal breaker to have silver buttons with our uh, our watch. It should be okay. Um, but it's just a shame that we couldn't get that actually all completed. So you win some, you lose some. We now have a module 
that is essentially sitting there that we need to go ahead and actually fix. Looks kind of cool though. Um, so we'll work on how we can actually get this done into our kit. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, failed mod number two. Like I say, some you win, some you lose. Uh, button replacement. This is probably the first and the last time I will actually go ahead and actually do it because it's very, very complicated. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. There will be a part two when we get the, uh, the catches and we'll do our best to see if we can get this watch mod finished. Thank you so much for joining.